there's a Jesuit named James Keegan who said, mercy is the willingness to enter into the chaos of another human being. And uh, so we've taken it on the scale of the chaos of another country. <laughs> My board sometimes asks me, couldn't you have picked two easier countries <laughs> than South Sudan and Haiti? And I said, but that's where the need is. And that's what, uh, you know, as a sister of mercy, that's, that's my spirit, is to go where the, where the need is. The challenges in South Sudan, I, I mean, where do I start? There's no infrastructure. There's only one paved road. There are no bridges. Then there's the tribal divisions. They speak at least 42 different languages. There are traditional enmities. Cattle raiding is the national sport. Every boy and every man from the age of 10 on up is carrying an AK-47. The bandits attack the vehicles on the road, so every time we travel, we're vulnerable. But it's a culture of revenge and of violence and of complete neglect of women. The women and girls in South Sudan, they are actually taught from the time they are infants that they are worth less than cows. And they believe it. There's God, and then there's men, and then there's cattle, and then there's females. There is this sense of worthlessness which is so wrong, it's just so wrong. In Haiti, it's not oppression that holds back women, it's just abject poverty. The average girl goes to school for two years only. So all that talent is wasted again. How can a country develop? We want to open those opportunities for women and girls. They're so resilient. They're so bright. They're so hardworking. Just need some resources to get them started. Mercy Beyond Borders' mission is forging ways for women and girls in extreme poverty to learn, connect, and lead. We decided on our mission by talking with the women. We talked to them and said, what would you need? to start life over. They didn't ask for money. They said, educate our girls. Because in South Sudan, girls have never gone to school, never. And it was in the refugee camps that the women saw, women in other countries apparently are equal to men. They're doctors, they're administrators, they're working for the UN, they're social workers here in the camps. And so it opened their eyes and they like, I want this for my daughter. You're not just educating that girl, you're, you're literally saving her from early marriage, which usually means early death. People often say, well, how can you work amidst that level of suffering? And I say, you know, it's depressing if you turn off the television and say, I can't handle it. It's not depressing if you do something. How does Mercy Beyond Borders measure success? Yes, we have outcome measures and all of that, how many girls are staying in school, through high school, through college, how many women are starting businesses. But I measure the success by the light in 85-year-old Oville here in Haiti who, who learned to write her name, who said to me, I asked her, why, are, why did you sign up for the Mercy Beyond Borders literacy class? And she said, because it's been my dream to write my name before I die. That's success to me, you know. It's not gonna to scale to 10,000 people, but it, it means the world to me and to her. <laughs>